All right, God bless you. God bless you. This is part number two, our our storage <coughs> space filled up, and therefore it shut down. One of these day, God will. One of these day, we will get uh, maybe a laptop or a whole computer system where we won't have to worry about that. But nevertheless, the word of God going forth. And now this is part number two. Or part number one. With however, whatever all you get. Number two is below. Look at the one we did above this. If it's number one, look at the one below this. Nevertheless, we were talking. When. God called God ordained preachers. God sent preachers. Through his son Jesus. Jesus, Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Jesus said, My Father has sent me, so send I you. I see you as a lamb before wolves. <laughs> and that's why the wolves come out. We ain't going to the wolves' house and preach, but we preach and the wolves come out. They come out to destroy us. We preach and they come out. We ain't seeking no apartment at your church to preach nothing. We just preach and they come out. Before I even step foot in a pool pit, to preach. Jesus saved me. I repent of my sin. Believed on him. Called on him to save me. He saved me. And wiped my sins away. And uh, I repented of my sins. In 19, uh, August 1982. I believe it was. 82. Yeah. August 1982. From the time when, from August 1982 until I set foot in the pool pit to preach in May of 1991, August 82 to May 91, 82, 91, that's nine years. From 82, 1982, when I repented of my sin, believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, became a disciple of Christ, until nine years later, May 1991, when I first set foot in the poor pit to bring a message. From that time, 82 to 91, I was already preaching Christ, already preaching the gospel. Already, no, not no, not in the church building, but yeah, preaching on my job and preaching in the neighborhood and preaching, preaching downtown and preaching on the street corner and preaching on the bus stop and passing out tracks, writing my own tracks and preaching to my family and my friends and the guy I used to run around with and the girl I used to run around, preach to him. He said, man, come on, let go, let, let, let go find some girls. Let go chase some girls. The word was, man, let go run some of these holes. I said, I don't do that no more. Man, get my cigarette. I said, oh, I don't do that no more. Man, buy me a bill. Let go get drunk. No, I don't do that no more. Why? Because Jesus Christ saved me. They said, man, you know, nah, 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 darling, you know what me and you used to do, now. Nah. Yeah, but the things I used to do, I don't do no more. Because Jesus Christ changed me and saved me. I'm living for Jesus now. And, oh, I was preaching here since then. Hallelujah. All on the bus. Not the bus stop. On the bus.
in the doctor's office. I had surgery back in 1989. In the doctor's office. <laughs> in the hospital. Laying on my back in the hospital bed, preaching. Before I even set foot in the poor pit. Yeah, they did a hallelujah with 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 with, with start coming to Sunday school. And the Lord began to move and bring the word to me. And when they say, Well, who got comments? I, I raised my hand, I got comments and we and then we go to we go to preach. Then you had the the overseer come and sit in the class and listen and see me going forward. They called me up before the whole congregation, maybe about uh, 200, 300 folk. Don't let little brother, our little brother Dunlap come up here. And we said what thus said the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. And one elder came to me. Man, I didn't know that you had all that in you. We, we, but I was sent to preach the gospel and preach the word. Now, 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 then, uh, uh, In 91, when I stepped foot in the pulpit, my God, all my family, just about all of them in Memphis, they showed up. Why? I had preached to all of them. <laughs> they knew my life before and after. <laughs> Cousin. Sharon McDill, uh, 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 they, uh, they remember when they had to pick me up off the floor, drunk, couldn't stand up. Sharon McDill, <laughs> could. They knew me before. Hallelujah. Man, I preached all in the neighborhood. Didn't why I even step foot in a pulpit. M -m some of my cousins started calling me Deacon. Because they had made me a little junior Deacon that chat. And some of started calling me Deacon. The work that you're doing, you're doing it in the body of Christ. And, and they know what you're doing. They're going to see what you're doing. And they know you. Now, God called people that's not among the body of Christ. But he tells them to come to the body of Christ. Like he did with Apostle Paul. He told him, go and inquire for one named Ananias, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. But he going to send you to the body of Christ, so you will know what you're talking about. I, mean, I better go get that, and I need to put it up right here. And it shall be told thee what thou must do. Uh, oh, Acts 9 and 6. See, Paul wasn't in nobody to cry. Nobody knew about him. Even folk didn't even believe him. And he trembling and astonished, saying, Lord, what would thou have me to do? And the Lord said to him, Arise, go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. That's 9 and 6. I need that whole ninth chapter. I need that whole ninth chapter. Acts chapter nine. According to Wikipedia, I don't, I don't, I, I, I don't need your voice, woman. I don't need your voice. Acts chapter nine. Here it is. So I was with the body of Christ, but hallelujah, glory to God, Jesus sent him to the body of Christ. How you going to learn? Chapter 9. And saw yet bring not threat and slaughter against the disciple of the Lord. Went to the high priest, he came to the false prophet. 
desired letters of the master to the synagogue if you found any in this way in the sight of Jesus whether men or women he might bring them bound into the room he gonna lock them up and as he judged he came to the master son that sounded around him a life from him he fell to the earth and heard his voice saying Saul son why persecute thou me he said who art thou Lord and Lord said I am Jesus whom thou persecuted it's hard for thee to kick against the prick and he trembled and started to say, Lord, what I have me to do? And the Lord said, Let him arrive, go into the city. Go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. And the man which judged with him stood speechless, hearing the voice of the steering no man. Saul arose from the earth, and when his eye was open, he saw no man. And he led him by the head and brought him into a mallet. And he was three days without sight, neither did he eat or drink. And there was a certain disciple of the master named Ananias. To him said the Lord in the vision. He said, Behold, hear my Lord. And the Lord said, Him arrive, go into the street of one called Straight, and inquire in the house of Jude for one named Saul. For he praying, has seen the written name of Ananias coming in and put his hand on it, he might receive his sight. And then I said, Lord, I've heard many things about this, how much he was, this may have done to thy sake as a ruler. And he had authority from chief priest by the, to bind all that call on thy name. But the law said to him, Go that way, he the toes and dress up with me. To bow my name before Gentile king and the children of Israel. Whew. He sent him to the saints. No, he wasn't with the saints. He was an enemy. Ignorant. Lie you ignorant. Lie you ignorant. Lie you ignorant. And y'all come against me when I preach the word of God. You ignorant. Some ain't ignorant. But lie you ignorant. And God going to use you. Whoever God to, he going to send them to these saints. Don't come tell me you don't fellowship with no saint. Uh, you, know, you better get saved somewhere. You do fellowship with the saints. I didn't say with no building. I said saints. Wherever the saints commune at, you be there. You don't know no saint. You don't know no saint in your, in your city? You don't know no more? <laughs> I need to come put up, put a church up there. Nah, that would be being facetious. <laughs> All right. Now, therefore, he called those that are not among the saints. The saints don't know, but he gonna send them among the saints so they can know and read on further. Say immediately he went with the disciples certain day, and he went immediately preaching Christ. We preach, we don't go see it. We preach, and they hear, and they come a running. Snakes, vipers, hypocrites, true saints, uh, true people that want to be saved, they repent, they say, they be saved. But along with them come hypocrites and false prophets that want to shut us up. They have a nerve to try to get scripture. <laughs> All right, that's enough. God bless you. Thank you for being.